Because to this kind of situation, I'm really nervous. <laughs> and uh, as I knew, I was going to be very nervous, even if I'm trying not to be. I decided to write everything I, I'd like to tell you, so that I don't get lost, and that I tell you what I'd like to say. Okay? So, thank you for understanding. You're going to be Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really, because this is not a real paper. Okay? <laughs> So, uh, before starting, I'd like to say that it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank Diana for the opportunity for the funding, uh, Limario and Valkyria for the national project. It's really wonderful for me to be here and to tell you what I've been, uh, what I've been thinking and what, and what I've been doing, and then listening to what, what you have to say. So, thank you. So, um, today, today I'm going to speak about teaching, teaching and teacher social roles as the main motivation for my PhD research. Pre-service education is the chosen context due to the work I do at the university and the problems I face with student teachers who get, as I said before, demotivated and give up the teaching profession even before really going into it. Critical teacher education is questioned here as a possible means to re-signify those roles, including mine as a teacher and a teacher educator, so that I have the chance to open my mind to new and diverse ways to work on teacher education for teaching and teacher empowerment. In this presentation, firstly, I'm going to give some basic information on my working context and on the teaching career in Brazil, the topics that motivate my research. After that, I'm going to make some theoretical considerations concerning concepts I find relevant for this first moment reflection on the subject and at the same time I am going to propose some questions. I have no answers, just questions. <laughs> so that we can reflect together and you can help me see these ideas with new eyes. So let's, let us turn then to the first part. Um, here uh, you can see some basic information about Mariana, the small town where I work. It is a historical city in the state of Minas Gerais, in the southeast of Brazil. So this is just for you to have an idea of what Mariana is like. Uh, since I work within the context of pre-service teacher education, I thought it would be relevant to give you a picture of the local education structure in terms of public and private schools. The graph shows the number of preschools, 34, elementary schools 41, and high schools 11 in Mariana. Mm -hmm. Besides that, we also have the number uh, of higher education institutions, which are seven, being one of them the public university where I work. Uh, at the campus in Mariana, we hold the courses of history, education, translation, and language teaching. This semester, uh, 2012, second semester, we have 58 students enrolled in our EFL teacher education course. Unfortunately, I have to say that many of these 58 students don't really dream of becoming teachers. As a matter of fact, becoming a teacher is not a dream profession for most high school students in Brazil. As shown by the results of this research, developed by Fundação Carlos Chagas, a Brazilian research institution. So, as you can see, my local reality, Mariana, seems not to be very different from our Brazilian general reality. 1,501 public and private high school students were interviewed for this research. And as you can see, law, administration, engineering, and medicine are their top future career choices. For those in public schools, education is their 16th choice, choice, and language teaching and other teaching careers, the 24th. For those in private schools, education is the 36th choice, and teaching is their 37th choice. Well, during high school years and the process of choosing a career from uh, the 1,501 students interviewed, only 10, 1%, didn't have a clear idea of which profession to choose. 1,015, 
uh, which means 6 to 7 percent, didn't consider teaching as a possibility. And 476, that is 22 percent, did consider teaching as a possibility. But by the end of their high school period, only 32, that is 2 percent of those 476 students kept their choice. The research also shows the reasons why some high school students think teaching could be a good choice. Good personal relationship, relations with teachers motivate the choice for the profession. And the possibility of teaching, that is, of transmitting knowledge, is another positive outcome of the profession. On the other hand, uh, the, the factors that demotivate them to choose teaching as a career are related to low salaries and low social value. That is, teachers are seen as economically and socially undervalued professionals. Negative feedback from in-service teachers and difficult everyday working conditions are also pointed out as negative factors. Some of my students, teachers to be, have been telling me their stories about these reasons. So one of, one of my students said, I'm lost, I'm not sure what I'll do, I just know I don't want to teach. She's about to graduate, she was about to, yeah, she is about to graduate. Uh, during the class I realized that it, wouldn't, it would not really be very easy to keep students quiet and interested, since most of them do not take English very seriously. Uh, she means the, the school students. Uh, my younger sister decided to become a dentist, and I'm still here, away from school and not willing to go back there. The teacher asked us why we didn't do something else. She said we're still young and can do anything we want. <laughs> well, the results we have from all this is that Brazil lacks 710,000 elementary and high school teachers. 34% 34% is the number of students who give up education and teaching courses. And 55% is the number of not taking places in those courses. The research concludes that high school students believe you must love teaching and be very patient in order to become a teacher. It's a priesthood, a mission, a vocation. Many people say that teaching is a relevant, noble, and beautiful profession, a profession of great responsibility. But parents and teenagers don't seem interested in having a teacher in their families. Many say that's because in order to become a teacher, you have to be, very, you have to be dedicated, sacrifice all the areas of your life, and study very hard. According to their view, teacher, teachers have multiple hard tasks low social value and low payment. They are dis disrespected and frustrated. Besides all this, there is also the belief that school students are not interested in language learning, and consequently, it is very hard to convince them of the importance and, and relevance of foreign language learning. It would be interesting at this point, I think, for our knowledge exchange project to question how this reality compares or contrasts across Brazil and, and Canada, Brazilian and Canada, Canadian settings. Well, but focusing on the Brazilian scenario and on my narrative about the situation I was facing, at a certain point of my narrative, of my story here, I started thinking that, okay, the situation was really hard, but I have to find some ways to deal with it. New teaching proposals, new teaching practice, new reasons to teach foreign language and to become a teacher, something. So I started talking to people, going to conferences, reading, and looking for some inspiration. And I found it. My inspiration came from people such as Vera Menezes, Miriam Jorge, Valkyria, Primari, Diana, Andrea, Paulo Freire, Alan Luke, and others. <laughs> I started. You're lost. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. I'm lost. I'm so glad you said that because I, I really am. <laughs> That's why I've been so quiet. <laughs> okay. So I started with the National Curriculum Guidelines for High School when the authors say, for example, 
that uh, when we talk about the education aspect of foreign language teaching, we refer to the understanding of the concept of citizenship, a, value, a social value to be developed in the various school subjects, not just through the study of foreign languages. The two most relevant points from me here were the educational aspects of foreign language teaching and the concept of citizenship as a social value to be developed through the study of foreign languages. Wow. About the first concept, uh, Diana Bryden uh, uh, has given me valuable contribu contribution when she said, teaching English cannot involve attention to the language alone because English is embedded in historical, cultural, and social contexts that require attention to the stories it tells and the genres it works through. English hails its, re its readers and interlocutors into specific forms of subjectivity that shape the ways in which the world can be seen and understood. About the second, the concept of citizenship as a social value, I find these definitions very enlightening. That is, people's understanding of their position in society, the implications of this position, and the consequences of keeping or changing it. People having the opportunity and ability to make choices about how they want to live. People making decisions, participating, and acting both locally and globally. At this point, I felt I had found a way out of my worries about teaching and teachers' futures, because even if According to my interpretation, those authors were talking about learners or language learners. I thought those ideas were fundamental for teacher education, to the understanding of the value of teaching and teachers for the education of a citizen teacher. So at this point, I was enthusiastic. Okay. But then I started thinking about how I would help my student teachers to develop those abilities and understandings to acquire the necessary knowledge to become citizen teachers. I found then that as proposed by some of the authors mentioned, a possible way would be trying to be more critical. That is, trying to change uh, understanding of the world and in the same process to change that very world that we inhabit and are trying to understand, as pointed out by Lancashire and McLaren. And as highlighted by Luke, trying to understand the way we, we use texts and discourses to construct and negotiate identity, power, and capital. At this point, I decided I would give a try to those ideas in my teaching practice classes. That was when I came out with that proposal I showed to you in Toronto that my students did, uh, when my student teachers had the chance to implement the ideas proposed by Valkyrie and Limario and by Andrea and, and Katia, Matos and Valerio, mainly in their classes in some public schools in Mariana during their internship period. The positive outcomes of this experience uh, in terms of my student teachers discovering some new reasons to choose teaching as, a, as their career made me think that we have probably been telling what Shimamanda Adishi calls a single story. So we have probably been teaching a single story of teaching and teachers in Brazil. So she talks about the danger of a single story. Mm -hmm. The African writer and the storyteller, as she, as she defines herself, talks about how impressionable and vulnerable we are in the face of a story, particularly as children. She says that to create a single story, you just have to show a people as one thing, as only one thing, over and over again. And that's what they become. This makes me think of some questions such as, have we been telling a single story about teachers and teaching in Brazil? Have we been vulnerable to the single story of teachers we have been told? How have we learned our single stories about teachers? Who tells them? Why do we accept these stories as the only truth about teachers? Well, and then I come to Lynn's classes, <laughs> in which I have been very, you know, <laughs> lost. Anyway, I think uh, these questions dialogue with the ideas proposed by Vatimu, Sousa Santos in vain, to whom truth is seen as a, as a perspective of reality. 
Meaning that truth is not something that, is alre that already exists. It's not absolute, but, but rather depends on our interpretations of reality. And these interpretations depend on our stories, on who we are, where we come from. Truth is therefore changeable, not fixed. According to Bain, we live simultaneously in different programs of truth. And these programs have historical causes and are the result of socialization. The truth, Vatim says, is that the truth varies. And because the truth is changeable and not fixed, it, Sousa Sanders, as I, as I interpret his ideas, proposes the ecology of knowledge, meaning our truths coexist and can dialogue. According to him, to him and here I quote, um, the possibilities and limits of understanding and action of each way of knowing can only be grasped to the extent that each way of knowing offers a comparison with other ways of knowing. Such comparison is always a reduced version of the epistemological diversity of the world, the latter being infinite. Okay. So, uh, that is why I think single, story, single stories are so, um, let's say, part of our history. They depend on our views of truth and, therefore, on power relations. Uh, Shumamanda Dishi says that it's impossible to talk about the single story without talking about power. Power, she says, is the ability not just to tell the story of another person, but to make it the definitive story of that person. How stories are told, who tells them, when they are told, how many stories are told are really dependent on power. Even if people usually say that Foucault is, is pe pessimistic, his ideas can also be seen as, a, as very optimistic, since he says that power can be resisted. That resistance is coextensive with power, which means that as soon as, as there is a power relation, there is a possibility of resistance. There is always the possibility of resistance, no matter how oppressive the system. That's probably one of the reasons why Shimamanda Dishi says that story matters. Stories matter. Many stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign, but stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. The idea here, I think, is that we should resist single stories. We should be aware of the fact that there is never a single story. And if we keep telling the same single story, or if we have no access to different stories of a people, we risk misinterpretation and unethical behavior towards the other. It is necessary, according to Menezes de Souza, uh, that uh, the learner, and I would add the teacher, understand the consequences that his or her interpretations and values can have on the other that he or she and the other have different interpretations and values. That is, according to him, the ethical dimension. Paulo Freire understands that, and here I quote, once present in the world, it's impossible not to contribute to the creation of this world. But this creation, according to him, should be responsible. And that responsibility is what he calls ethics. The story told about teachers and teaching certainly constitute us. But I believe that there are also many other stories we, as teachers and teacher educators, know about teachers and teaching that can make us regain our dignity. Dignity for us is what Shumamanda Dishi calls paradise. All of, those, all of these stories make me who I am. But to insist on only these negative stories is to flatten my experience and to overlook the many, the many other stories that formed me. When we reject the single story, she says, when we realize that there is never a single story about any place, she says, we regain a kind of paradise. I know my questioning and worries may be just the result of my anxiety. But how can I avoid anxiety and hurry when I look at my students' naive eyes and see the urgency of different stories? Stories that can, that can help empower them as people, as citizens and as teachers, 
and the stories that can help repair their broken dignity. <clears throat> I believe now that in order to do so, I, as a teacher educator, need to avoid what vain names blindness. Because, as he points out, when one does not see what one does not see, one does not even see that one is blind. <laughs> so I don't want to keep blind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want, as emphasized by Duboki, be able to have attitude and act within the frictions. Thank you.